Migrant moped gang dragging a woman down a New York City street. She crashes into a bike stand right there. Police department has released body camera footage of the attack on two officers by a group of migrants. People to go do his dirty work to grab phones and stuff. So he's the big target. This caused a lot of problems in New York City. The video shows a man in a yellow jacket who is believed to be Yo Henry Brito wrestling with the officers. And uh, hopefully we'll grab him when we, uh, we get some headway on this. First of all, thanks a lot, guys. Listen, we saw what happened. When the suspect, 45-year-old Jose Garcia, walked up behind her and hit her in the back of the head with the bottle. NYC imposes curfew. Following violent occurrences that the city believes to be the result of migrant shelter occupants that garnered national attention in recent weeks, New York City is extending its curfew to include more shelters. Following the implementation of curfews at four other places, Mayor Eric Adams' administration will begin enforcing a curfew at 20 migrant shelters on Monday, a spokesperson announced on Sunday. According to the mayor's office, the curfew will affect roughly 3,600 migrants, the bulk of whom are single men. Nearly 1,000 migrants are housed in the largest emergency center in Long Island City, Queens. Two recent attacks on the New York Police Department involved all-male migrants. Near the first incident, which was caught on camera near Times Square, Two officers are allegedly attacked severely by a gang of migrants. Migrant moped gang dragging a woman down a New York City street. She crashes into a bike stand right there. Police department has released body camera footage of the attack on two officers by a group of migrants. Snatches and robberies were told to take him, uh, putting out essentially uh, uh, a hit for... Uh... When the suspect, 45-year-old Jose Garcia, walked up behind her and hit her in the back of the head with the bottle. Another incident occurred in Times Square, where a 15-year-old immigrant from Venezuela allegedly shot a tourist after robbing a store and then opened fire on the pursuing police officers. The attacks took place when the NYPD announced that over 5,000 police officers had been injured by suspects, some of whom were immigrants, in the first nine months of 2023. When asked for evidence to support his claims that migrant crime has washed over the city, Police Commissioner Edward Cabin refused to give any citing a lack of information from city and police officials. The Associated Press claims that the city does not monitor crime trends based on the nationality of suspects. The majority of crime categories have actually decreased since the spike in migrant arrivals started 18 months ago, according to the AP. In November of 2023, New York City Police reported in a news release that overall crime had decreased by 4.1% from the previous year. The total number of offenses in the city has dropped by 866 so far this year. However, retailers in other parts of the country, like Chicago, Denver, and Washington, D.C., are noting an increase in retail theft and shoplifting incidents. Authorities fear that because there aren't enough resources available, migrants can turn to crime as a means of subsistence. Adams said News Nation that most asylum seekers are not represented by the offenses. I want to eliminate any situation in which individuals are engaging in violent crimes and engaging in criminal activity. They shouldn't be allowed to remain in our city. They ought not to remain in our city. When you're living off the generosity of New Yorkers and tax dollars, they shouldn't be here, Adams remarked. My PD officer assaulted in the Bronx yesterday afternoon, hit in the head with a bottle in the Kingsbridge section. People to go do his dirty work to grab phones and stuff. So he's the big target. This caused a lot of problems in New York City. The video shows a man in a yellow jacket who is believed to be Yo Henry Brito wrestling with the officers. Every bone in her body wasn't broken. They were trying to steal her purse and inside it her phone. Governor Kathy Hockle of New York stated that she doesn't think the recent crimes involving immigrants are singular occurrences. The city's police unions, however, claim that the immigration crisis makes the issue more difficult and that the number of assaults on police officers has escalated to the point of an epidemic. A curfew was first imposed on four shelters by city officials last month in response to concerns from the community. The 24 migrant shelters that are currently under limitation make up a small portion of the more than 200 shelters that the city runs to accommodate the approximately 66,000 recently arrived asylum seekers. NYC Migrant Moped Gang According to law enforcement sources who spoke with The Post, the migratory moped gangs who are terrorizing New York 
are a part of an illegal network of hoods that traffic in stolen goods from the five boroughs of Florida and send the money they make to South America. Franco Alexander Peraza, the leader of the migrant ring, claimed, It's much bigger than me. Navas reportedly told the NYPD after being apprehended in connection with other local thefts, I never thought you'd catch me in a million years. Navas, 30, is reported to have said to investigators, Every three weeks I've been traveling to Miami. It's also far larger than I am. According to the sources, the Venezuelan immigrant is a member of a group that has been connected to robberies in Yonkers, New Jersey, Florida, and New York City. They have also been connected to an illicit firearm that was used in a robbery in Fort Lauderdale on December 9. On November 22, a $279,000 heist at Solid Gold Jewelry in Manhattan took place with the same arm. Navas and his purported associates are believed to be involved in more occurrences in the Big Apple, such as a gunfight in the Bronx on November 18 with another group and an ongoing inquiry into a heist in Bergen County. Governor Hochul discussed New York's migrant crisis with President Biden yesterday in a conversation she called very productive. And uh, hopefully we'll grab him we, uh, we get some headway on this. First of all, thanks a lot, guys. Listen, we saw what happened. And shared our concerns. Uh, both the uh, governor was also uh, communicated with him. I think it was more like 4,000 people that we got last week, which is kind of insane when you think about what these numbers are. According to the sources, Para allegedly operated the local ring out of a Bronx apartment where stolen phones were hacked. Gang members were told to ship him clothes to Miami if he had to go on the run and to toss the phones out the window if police were closing in. Concurrently, a Venezuelan husband and wife duo operating a Texas-based shipping company carried the stolen phones, cash, and other stolen commodities to Colombia. Police were taken aback by the intricacy of the plan when they searched the Bronx flat according to sources. One such operation involved a meal delivery from the residents that resulted in a bill from Colombia, where the money was eventually used to order a swimming pool. According to the reports, Para's group additionally arrested in the smuggling of migrants into the U.S., with traffickers still owed large sums of money for the unauthorized border crossings. The sources claim that migrants were frequently shown pictures of their relatives in South America and threatened with death if the debts weren't paid. According to court documents, Navas is in federal jail and is being charged with carjacking, car theft, and interfering with business by threat or crime, while Para is still at large. The gang, led by Navas and Para, is only one aspect of the violent binge that starts with the blatant robberies by migrants on mopeds the New Yorkers witness as part of the global crime ring. According to the sources, police have noticed an increase in two-wheeled robberies and have discovered at least 32 distinct grand larceny patterns in the boroughs, which together account for over 140 distinct offenses. The attack on a 62-year-old Brooklyn woman who was dragged along the pavement by one of the teams in December was one of the most horrifying ones that was captured on camera. Since the spring of 2022, more than 170,000 migrants have entered the city from the U.S. border. Among them, more than 65,000 are currently staying in shelters and motels. Armed and dangerous A 15-year-old Venezuelan migrant, Jesus Alejandro Rivas Figuera, was arrested in Yonkers after a robbery gone wrong in Times Square. The U.S. Marshals Joint Regional Fugitive Task Force and the NYPD tracked Rivas down less than 24 hours after the events at the crossroads of the world. Rivas Figueroa was taken into custody at a relative's home and is expected to be charged as a juvenile with attempted murder of a police officer. He was identified as the armed and dangerous person of interest in the slaying. The city is caring for nearly 60,000 migrants right now. Let's face it, that number is not expected to get smaller. If they were running the city right now, We'd be, in, we'd be in a whole lot of trouble. You understand that we're in the middle of a surge right now. Let me start with the numbers. Last week, I think, I, my notes say 3,800. Since arriving in the city, many asylum seekers are picking up various day jobs in order to make ends meet. Rivas Figueroa arrived in September and was staying at a temporary shelter at the Stratford Hotel. He is also a suspect in a gunpoint robbery in the Bronx from January 27, and another incident in which shots were fired at a park on 45th Street in Midtown on January 25. 
NYPD Commissioner Edward Cabin commended his force for nabbing Rivas Figueroa less than 24 hours after his reign of terror. A migrant, Rivas Figueroa, and two other teens were arrested after allegedly trying to shoplift from a sports fashion retail store in Times Square. The gunman, who was in an all-white outfit, pulled out a large 45 caliber handgun and fired at a 38-year-old Brazilian tourist, Tatiel Ribeiro, who was in line waiting to buy sneakers and texting her husband. She was struck in the leg and dragged herself to the back of the store as chaos ensued. Rivas Figueroa and another 15-year-old boy bolted, with Rivas Figueroa allegedly opening fire on a cop as he ran away toward West 46th Street. Cops patrolling the area began chasing them, with one officer snatching the unidentified teen and the other continuing to run after the gunman. The suspect then bolted into the 47th to 50th Street's Rockefeller Center Station at 6th Avenue, where he went on the tracks before emerging and escaping onto the street. The innocent shopper who got shot got 13 stitches to her leg at Bellevue Hospital and was released. Investigators interviewed hundreds of witnesses, collected surveillance footage, ballistics evidence, and obtained pristine photos of the slayer. A 16-year-old boy believed to have been with Rivas Figueroa in the store on Friday morning was nabbed by police as investigators worked to determine their role in the incident. The U.S. Marshal for the Southern District of New York, Ralph Sozio, hailed the quick arrest and said that they would use every resource available to find and bring Rivas Figueroa to justice. Staff at the Stratford Hotel told the Post they believe Rivas Figueroa's family left the shelter sometime Friday morning. Other residents were shocked by the allegations against Rivas Figueroa, who was described as quiet and always at church with his mom. Valeria Mendez, 35, advised her son to stay away from Rivas Figueroa. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.